Hey guys, Justin here at DataSpark, and one of the questions we frequently get is how can I validate the sales estimates that I'm getting? You're out here on Walmart scrolling around and you see that we're estimating that you're selling 32 units a, a month on this, or you get a sales estimate from another source and you're just not sure who to trust. Well, today I wanna to go over with you three ways that you can independently validate these sales estimates and know for yourself whether you should trust these or not. We realize that you're making some big decisions off of this and it's really impactful getting these sales estimates right. So let's get started. The first way is to look at the reviews. Now I'm gonna go over all of this information is here in the Chrome extension, but I'm actually going to look at this over on the DataSpark. So you'll see that this thing has 34 reviews, 4.8 stars, that's good. <clears throat> but what we really wanna look at is what has that looked like over time? So you can see this nice stair step that we want to see, which is a good sign that this thing is, ha is seeing movement um, and that sales are happening. Now, the rule of thumb is that about 3% of customers leave reviews, or in other words, for about every 30 sales that happen, you would expect to see about one review left. So I'm gonna come down here and look at this. And so what you can see is that in the last 30, 90, and 180 days, there were nine reviews, six reviews, and one review left respectively. So if there was one review left in the last 30 days, a good estimate and this, this thing is selling about 30 or so. Uh, one divided by 0.03 is 30, 33. Now, if I look at the last 180 days, I can see there's nine reviews, so I'm gonna do the same thing, divide that by 0.03, and that's about 300, but that's over a six month period. So if I divide that by six, you can see that that is about 50. So over the last six months, I would expect that this thing is selling somewhere between 33 to 50 a month. That's a pretty good gauge. So it does vary a little bit by category. Uh, if it's a higher price point item, people are more likely to leave reviews. Like the high, you can think high-end electronics where they've done a lot of research into this. They are more likely to come back and leave a review. And so you're gonna to want to increase that percentage when you're uh, looking at it. Um, if it's a consumable item where they're gonna be purchasing it frequently, uh, they're less likely to review, leave reviews on every single purchase that they do. And so that's gonna have a lower percentage. But as you get to know these categories or you want to look at those ratios on, on your Amazon business, you can use that as kind of a rule of thumb uh, in these categories to figure out how many reviews are leave, le leading to how many sales. What's that ratio? <clears throat> Okay, the second way to validate this is to do a category rank analysis. So you can see up here at the top that this is ranked number 579 in cold cough and flu, but there's a lot more rich information because you wanna know what does that 579 really mean? So again, if I come down here, I can see what that category ranking has looked like in all the categories where we found this over time. And you can really get deep into this. I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and this is the simplest place to start where we just have every category where this is currently at, uh, what the current rank is and the 30 day average rank. And so this is where you can start to see, okay, I'm just gonna take this top one. It's number on the 30 day average 31 in probiotics. Well, what I want to look at is, I wanna look at items around it in probiotics to see what are they selling? And does that estimate of 34 or so make sense given the context that this is ranked number 31 in probiotics? So this is gonna take me over here into the best sellers view. And what you have here is Walmart gives us the top 1,000 ranked products in all of these categories. And so these are the top 1,000 in probiotics, uh, uh, roughly 1,000. I'm gonna sort this by the 30-day average because that's what we're looking at is a 30-day time frame. And we're gonna scroll down here until we get to the rank of where we're at. This one was number 34 or so, <coughs> uh, I think, 31. Um, and so we're gonna look at the items above it and below it and see, okay, this one is selling 32, but you'll see that, oh, some of these actually are selling a little bit more. So maybe this 32 is on the conservative side because I see some of these selling a bit more than that. So that leads me to believe it has perhaps has more potential with that type of rank. You can also do that same type of analysis on all the reviews over here. You will see a lot of these don't have any reviews, zero reviews. And so if we did that same math of 3%, boy, you wouldn't expect this one to be selling more than 30 or 40. Um, but you can see in the last 180 days, some of these have had a lot of reviews. Now, if you really wanna go 
and double click on this and get deeper. You can go look at these reviews and see are these organic reviews that are happening or are they using some kind of review syndication or something like that to up these reviews which aren't necessarily gonna be indicative of sales. And so you can kind of go as deep as you want on this and really trying to figure out what is the range though that something within this rank should be selling. And you can, you can use both the sales estimates that are coming from DataSpark for similar items as well as your own analysis of these reviews and using that 3% or 5% or 1% or whatever you think is appropriate for this category to back into roughly what the movement is on items like that. So again, just another data set to help validate those sales estimates and roughly what range you think that's going to be in. Okay, the third way is we're gonna come back over here and in order to generate sales, you have to have traffic. And that traffic is often coming from keywords. And so over here on the same page, you can see in the product placement section, what are all the keywords where this item ranks within the top uh, uh, usually 80, uh, 80 to 120. Sometimes we'll go up a little bit more of, of how many we're uh, tracking for these keywords. And so you'll see this has a number of keywords where it's ranking. That's good. That's definitely indicating that there are some traffic. There's eyeballs. This thing is getting impressions. Those impressions are going to lead to clicks and those clicks are going to lead to purchases. So the best ranking keyword on Walmart that this item ranks on is gas pills. And it is ranked number that this keyword gas pills is ranked number 28,202 on Walmart. So in other words, if you take the best uh, keyword, that's ranked number one, and the worst keyword, let's say, is down at a million, uh, this keyword is ranked number 28,202. Uh, and it's more popular on Walmart than it is on Amazon. Well, this product shows up as number 23 on this keyword. So if you come over here to Walmart, And you'll see that Walmart, they have some sponsored products in these results, but they typically have four products per line. So one, two, three, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 32. Now traffic falls off significantly as you move down the page. The, this first row is gonna get the bulk of the clicks that come to this page. And this will get some, but it just starts falling off. So when you come back here and you look at these keywords, what you're wanting to look for is, okay, both how many keywords is it ranking for? That's great. How many of them are higher traffic? That's another big factor. But on how many of them is it actually getting some of the traffic? Well, something like this, it's on the second page of search results. So it's likely not getting very much traffic at all. And this one, it's gonna be in the fifth row. So yeah, it might not be a lot, but some. And so likely this gas pills, surviving the apple whites, whatever that is, it's getting a little bit of traffic. Now it does have two keywords down here where this one is showing up in the first row and this one in the second row. That's good. That is definitely an indication um, that there is some traffic getting to this and it should be seeing some movement. Now this one is not quite as quantitative as the other one. You're kind of qualitatively looking at this, but what I often use this for is we'll get people that will approach us and they're saying, hey, I'm seeing the sales estimate of zero, one, or two of just not much movement. Isn't it selling more than that? And they really want it to be selling because they've secured a supplier for it or whatever it may be. And this is where we come and say, well, it's gotta have keywords in order to have sales. And on those same items, we'll often come and see that it's either not ranking for any keywords or it only has one or two or a handful of keywords, but it's really low in the product position. And so, yeah, it's likely not getting much many sales because it's not getting much traffic. So those are three ways that you can independently validate these sales estimates and get a level of confidence that this sales estimate is either accurate or perhaps you're gonna feel it's over or under biased, but you can go deeper and really analyze this to make the best decisions that you can. I hope that helps. If you have any other questions about this, don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks.